Hello friends this is a 75 year old gentleman who has this brown cat tract which is about grade 4 to grade 5 nucleus sclerosis now he's undergoing fecal emulsification patient is quite cooperative so we're going to do it under topical anesthesia of course the main challenge in this case is to deal with this hard nucleus and dividing this into smaller fragments is going to be a challenge the good part in this case is the cornea is extremely clear, the visibility is not an issue and pupil is also very well dilated. So these are the good things which are encouraging. The capsule is stained with trepan blue and these cases the visibility is going to be a challenge because of this muddy looking cataract. So the trepan blue staining does help in identifying the capsule pretty well. The goal is to get at least a 5.5 millimeter rexus because a smaller rexus is not going to be good for managing this nucleus. So it's imperative that we have to have at least 5.5 mm or more size rexus and I think I've got a decent size rexus in this case. The biggest challenge is now to divide this nucleus into smaller fragments. As is customary for me to do in these dense cataracts, my standard go-to technique is always to a central trench or create a small central pit which gives me access to the central core of the nucleus and then I can go and do my vertical chopping. So for doing this trench, I'm going to use just continuous torsional energy for sculpting out the central part of the nucleus. And it's about 3 mm in diameter and the depth would be around 60%. Now is the time to start doing the vertical chop. The settings are changed to longitudinal burst mode and these are the settings. I ensure that the tip is completely buried and as I'm attempting the vertical chop we can see that the nucleus is experiencing torque. So the grip is not great, the grip slips so the separation is not complete. I come back and re-engage the tip in a different part of the nucleus and then now I can perform the lateral separation maneuvers. Although we can clearly see that the central portion of the posterior plate is extremely thick and tenacious and is refusing to give way. I just leave it there rotate the nucleus and then I'm trying to bury the tip into the nucleus and the entire tip is buried but again when I'm trying to chop the nucleus vertically down we can see that there is significant torque in the nucleus and this is not good so I just come out again re-engage the nucleus in a more superficial part of it and then re-attempt the vertical chop. In this case I'm successful in preventing the torque and the chopper goes down and then the lateral separations maneuvers are being done. Time to perform the chop in the adjacent fragment and the tip is buried and I'm going to do the lateral separation maneuvers now. Now mind you this was a central thick posterior plate and you can uh, see how thick and uh, tenacious this is. So it's going to take in a lot of patience and perseverance to eventually break this posterior plate attachment. This large fragment is then subdivided into two smaller fragments. I'm trying to do these maneuvers of and placing the chopper in the most more posterior plane. The iris is trying to come out to the side port. So time to come out. I'm just injecting a little bit of phenocaine to ensure that the iris behaves a little better. And time to replenish the OVD. Uh, using a sinski hook and a chopper, I just go down and confirm that the posterior plate is well and truly cracked and uh, we've got two distinct heminucleus. And now is the time to perform the same maneuvers in the second heminucleus. Again, the challenge of the torque is going to be there initially in the first two fragments, but in the second heminucleus, these challenges won't be there. It's easier for us to go in and bury the tip and perform the vertical chop maneuvers. Such cataracts demand a lot of patience from us and uh, a lot of care and it's just a matter of being a little bit more focused and persistent and eventually most of these cataracts can be broken down quite comfortably. The second heminucleus has now been divided into three smaller fragments. The settings are again changed to the quadrant removal mode and where I'm going to use just the torsional in continuous mode which is extremely effective in cutting down these fragments into smaller pieces and then emulsifying it. So in a couple of minutes the first heminucleus is totally emulsified and now we are left with the second heminucleus. Each of these fragments is then grasped and brought and pulled up at the level of the rexus margin and then being emulsified. 
So if you are able to control the amount of energy which is delivered in a much more controlled manner using the foot pedal, we can minimize the amount of uh, turbulence and chatter which can happen in these cases. And if the plane of emulsification is right and if you can control the lens chatter and turbulence, uh, usually the endothelial damage will be very minimal. So we'll have a clear corneas in the first post-op day. I'm using bimanual irrigation aspiration to perform cortex aspiration. Again, we need to be mindful that these long-standing cataracts with very hard nucleus, the bag and the capsule will be slightly fragile. We need to be mindful of this when trying to aspirate the cortex because we've done a good job until now and we shouldn't lose it while performing this cortex aspiration by uh, breaking the posterior capsule. So being a little bit watchful definitely does help. The posterior capsule is being flushed with the BSS just to clean off any of the remaining fibers. The capsule bag looks to be clean and nice. Now is the time to implant the intraocular lens. A single piece hydrophobic lens is being implanted into the capsule bag. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is irrigated out. The lens looks to be nice and well centered. Time to close. The side ports and the main incision is hydrated and that's it, the case is done. These are the first day post-op pictures and the cornea is clear and the patient is doing fine. To summarize, in these dense cataracts, it's always a challenge to divide the nucleus. It would not be wise to imagine that the crack is going to happen in the first attempt itself. It's going to require multiple attempts or maneuvers of lateral separation to eventually get a full thickness crack. In this case, we could clearly see that the first two attempts of chopping the nucleus were not so successful simply because of the torque which was being induced when I'm trying to do the vertical chop maneuver. This happens because if the hold of the nucleus is not good enough. So what I did was I came out and re-engaged the nucleus in a different part and then when the grip was good, the extent of torque was minimized. So this was noticed in two instances in this case. The first chop and also the, the second quadrant chop also we noticed this. So what I did was again place the phaco tip in a slightly more superficial manner and then the during the vertical chop maneuver the extent of torque was minimized. So this was something to note in this case. In these cases the most important asset the surgeon must have is patience and his ability to persist. And be very calm and eventually most of these cataracts can be broken successfully into smaller fragments. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.